Might this be the perfect mix between a premium sedan and an SUV? This one here is the Mercedes E-Class All-Terrain. So we have the E-Class in the new generation, then as the estate or wagon, and in this special off-road version here, tell you all about it with Thomas Nautikfuhl in 4K, full screen, full length. Let's go here with the front. It has two horizontal spokes because this is leaning towards the SUV look at Mercedes, whereas the normal estate or the normal E-Class would have this one horizontal spoke here. Then we have the chrome in the lower part and new headlamp design also for this new generation. You could also go for a black or night package, then the lower part would be blacked out also as for the side mirrors and so on. And most obvious here for the all-terrain version are these crossover claddings here at the side profile. Then more chromia at the lower side squad. Once again, this could be blacked out with the night package. The length here for me is 95 or 195 inches, like all E-Class in the new generation. Wheels already start at 80 inch, and these here are in the optional, get 19. 20 inch for these ones here, really massive styling. And I think the whole vehicle looks so cool. This all-terrain look definitely adds something special. And what's also special is that this is also the estate for the Northern American market. So for example, in the US, you can only get this one here when you want to go for an E-Class wagon. Comes with the air suspension. And then that one in combination with a little bit higher tires goes for more ground clearance, so around a little bit more than four centimeters or one and a half inches more ground clearance than a normal E-Class with the same air suspension. In the rear, the new E-Class generation gets these star-alike rear light patterns. That's very beautiful. Also this combination then here of left and right and middle part, but this one is not illuminated. And then the all-terrain version, you can see more chrome, and then again more blacked out in the night package here in the lower part. Is that a case for the auto fake exhaust police? Maybe a little bit? Yeah, but still, I think the all-terrain also looks really cool once again with this black contrast here also in the rear part. Rear axle steering, usually an option for the E-Class that would come together with an air suspension. Rear axle steering not available for the estates of a wagon and that's also the reason why it's not available for the all-terrain. The reason is they want to keep the boot as large as possible and then the space for the rear axle steering parts is actually missing. Turning indicators in front, hmm, like that, pretty fancy. What do you think? Hmm, turning indicators in the rear, little bit lame, isn't it? Opening the doors here, it's standard that you have these retractable door handles. What is cool is that they have ambient lighting around. That looks really cool at night, especially. Just this haptic feedback, um, this whole overcomplicated system, I'm not such a fan of. And door closing sound, it sounds almost like, you know, old school in a way, like a, like a W123 or something. That's, that's actually quite fancy. And here, this smartphone access. At the moment, I'm opening the vehicle with the smartphone. That is an option. Inside of the doors, pro and cons. Soft touch is good here as well. Then a nice ambient lighting integration all, also around here. However, high gloss black here. And then there's one button. Although you have so many functions, it goes in the hashtag capacitive BS direction. Here also with the seat control without any haptic feedback. Not to my liking. Then again, a cool structure on top of that here. Nice window levers. But here, once again, the hashtag capacitive BS buttons for the side mirror control. And once again, what I really like is soft touch also in the lower part of the doors. More and more vehicles do not have that. And also felt here on the inside. And I really have to say, some recent Mercedes models, for me, went down in the build quality. Here with the new E-Class, they really stepped up the build quality again. And I also feel that the build quality here in the new E-Class is actually better than in the S-Class. Here, headroom with the panoramic roof to the hard side. 189, 602, still some left. We have the panoramic roof here. There is the slider, not that easy to control, but it's good that you have the shade, you have the split in between, and this is also a panoramic roof you can still open. Of course, once again, it is an option, but it opens really wide here and you can leave some fresh air in. Seating position itself, I'm overall happy with the comfort, also the long-term comfort. Um, here in the E-Class, 
at you know the comparison with the other models among the best seat ergonomics I feel at the moment. These here are the optional animal skin seats. However, you can also get uh, animal friendly high grade leather red, the Artico, which is a new development from the material by the way. So the Artico has the special function that it can be wiped clean in a very cool way. I also recently did a special on Instagram and TikTok on that. And then also the Artico is available in different colors like the brown, bright or also black. All terrain floor mats. Yay! Big improvement here, the middle console. Ah, I just love this. This is also one of the reasons why I am a car enthusiast and like to pay attention to details. Just listen to this. Beautiful. The open cell, this matte wood. And here for the central console, you can get different decor elements like this that you can avoid more high gloss black. Then you slide it open. You have USB-C chargers, inductive charging pad and cup holders and you can push them in that they come out. But the problem is when you have like a... These charging stations. Where shall we drive to? Cancel? I don't know. I'm listening. No. Let's go back to the cup holders. So when you put a bottle in here that is quite high but shallow or slim, look at that. It doesn't really catch the bottle, it flies around while driving. So these cup holders are basically only for really large, I don't know, like coffee uh, cups or something like that. So when they're light and shallow and wide, as soon as something is high and slim, it's a problem. So you know that I always pay attention to the interaction with the vehicle. And here this split armor is also one of my favorite Mercedes features always because it just looks cool when it opens at the same time left and right. Then there's USB-C charging underneath and more space. And also when you close it like this, either like this or at the same time, it's also a cool sound. In here, a cockpit overview. You can see here at the moment, the ambient lighting is dancing. I have music running in the background just very silently. And you can see that it's a very interesting effect. Maybe while driving too much, but static for a show off, why not? Digital instruments, clear to read, and you can also switch the whole styles. Here, for example, an assistance systems view. Yeah, sometimes it takes time to load. My favorite one is the off-road gauge that you also have then here for the all-terrain. And here's also the advantage of this normal steering wheel. So here, the sliding right, left, up and down to change something in the digital instruments works better when it's not the AMG line steering wheel. And you also get the very elaborated head-up display that can also lead us directly into this back door to the stones. You will always have a 14-inch screen here in the middle part. From base, however, there's decor element then on the right side. And optional, you can go for this so-called super screen. That is then this glass layer all around. And then you also get this passenger display. My favorite thing that in the passenger screen you can also have the off-road gauges to take a look at that. But of course you can also mirror everything else from the rest of the vehicle. They also now offer a Zinc video streaming app here uh, that you can make use of your time while co-driving. Most important new feature, YouTube app for the infotainment system while stationary. And then you can also watch Autogofuel while waiting for something, I don't know, it's good that we definitely have that. <laughs> Why not? Other than that, the infotainment system has the car internal GPS and then this bigger app view now in the new E-Class. You can also play Angry Birds, for example. That is, of course, also very important when waiting somewhere on someone, for example. You can do that. Um, you can also make use of the internal camera. And here the climate unit is controlled in the lower part. I always prefer manual climate knobs, you know, hashtag capacitive BS. Um, yeah, it is not that hard to control. It's also fairly big, but still to me a little bit too complicated or that you have to use the voice, I think is not really needed. And there's also this digital event control. Um, there we go here. When you click here, for example, then the events above that, they move to me actually a technological overkill. At least you can still control them manually. And you know, Mercedes are the kings of ambient lighting nowadays. So when you change the temperature, it also shows in this effect here in the ambient lighting. And a highly discussed feature is this. There is the camera app. You can, for example, take selfies. For whatever reason, you would not do it with your smartphone. But what you can do with that one is you can have video calls, for example, 
all probably thinking about being stationary somewhere, waiting somewhere or being stuck in traffic or something. And here for testing, as soon as I lift the brake, this still works. I'm starting there the we go. What the Please hell? Say the destination. Why, 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 why would that happen benefits? now? No, I don't want the vitality program. But what I want to show you is, here, when I lift the brake, just roll a little bit, there we go, camera disappears. Now this vitality program starts, why? <laughs> and the all-terrain also features here the special off-road see-through camera. And there you can see it builds up a camera image. So in front of us, there's a live camera image and underneath the vehicle is basically a past camera image. But here I have placed some obstacles here, so to speak. And there you can see they are between the wheels now and then you can see where they are. So if it would be a sharp rock that I don't damage the tire underneath. Rear seats. The rear doors, by the way, also have soft touch here, so very good build quality also for the rear doors. I like that. Leg room in this segment here is always something, I mean, it is sufficient for tall adults, both your leg room and also headroom, but of course not the best package as for exterior dimensions and what you find on the interior. Huge middle tunnel, and then you can fold this down, but oh, it's quite cozy here. Smartphone, a tablet holder, and then here for cup holders. And once again, what you see and feel, it's actually quite good. You could also fold down this ski hatch here, by the way. Rear climate unit, when the engine is running, you also have that. It actually gives a quite good feedback, considering the only thing I don't understand, you see here one thing, it is one button for everything. And that kind of seems strange. Or would you prefer it? I mean, the pro is, it is a clean solution then. Yeah, I mean, the haptic feedback is okay, so I guess we can live with that. Now to the hatch here of the all-terrain, the same of course for the estate, so estate and all-terrain of course identical here, 615 liters and here way wider than a meter of 40 inches, that's cool and the length is actually almost 115 in meters or 45 inches, very good usage of space, let me clean that up for you and you also saw maybe that here, this top cover here, it automatically goes up and down, so here when I close it, there we go, have you maybe seen it already closed? Here the window is really tinted, so you can't really see. But now when I open it again, look at how it goes up. And this is a very nice function. Also nice here, left and right, release of the back seats. Easily folds down, so very even floor. That's awesome. And the length in here is at 2 meters or 78 inches. So this is really super well usable. As for engines, 2 liter 4 cylinder, petrol or diesel. And then you have the 3 liter 6 cylinder, the E450, 380 horsepower and 4.5 seconds in the acceleration figure. The engine choices for the all-terrain versions are a little bit more limited because it goes a little bit more in a niche. This one will of course be the main engine for the US market for example and of course the most attractive one. Depending on the market, the E-Class offers also the 3 liter 6 cylinder diesel and also two plug-in hybrids both for petrol and for the diesel with a range of around 80 kilometers or 50 miles pure electric. It will be cleared later on which versions will also be available for the all-terrain version. The very interesting thing is when you have topography changes like here in the South Tyrol Alps region, then it makes a lot of sense actually to go for a plug-in hybrid because you can actually more than double the electric range by the recuperation effects and so on. I also did a very extensive test ride with the normal estate with the plug-in hybrid. You can see the numbers here, that was pretty interesting. But now it's time for the 450 3 liter 6 cylinder. Let's start with the sporty side. Sport mode. E450, six cylinder, of course the best engine you can buy here for an E-Class. And, well, especially in the sports mode, when the suspension is rather set on a stiffer note, then you don't feel so much difference in driving to a normal E-Class. Remember, this one here sits a little bit higher, yes, but again, especially in sport mode where the air suspension is a little bit stiffer, it's just normal E-Class driving, basically. But yeah, that's the, uh, <laughs> this is a speed limit warning. Yeah, we tend to deactivate it then. Really nice also from the steering input. That is what they changed here in this new generation. No dead zone area, good control of the steering. It feels way sportier than before without being less comfortable. So I'm really happy with the steering here. That is just awesome. 
then if we go back to the comfort mode, by the way, then the suspension is a little bit softer. So now we have to pay attention to the speed limit because there's a speed camera. <laughs> Not that I would, I would ever exceed the speed limit, right? So here we go. And then comfort mode, everything's a little bit softer, a little bit plusher from the air suspension. You can, of course, take a base suspension with an E-Class, yes, but air suspension just adds more comfort on the one hand and possible sportiness on the other hand. So the adjustment of that is just better. That's where you can play more with that. Then you can also go to this off-road mode. There we go, activate driver program, maximum speed 1 or 10 kilometers an hour, like 65 miles an hour. I also feel that the throttle input is changing, so this is more for off-road that you don't lose traction and so on. Slight throttle input, then the car is now even higher. Is that more comfortable from the suspension? Not necessarily, because when the car is higher, you also have uh, less suspension travel in the other way, you know, and this is rather reducing comfort, so to speak. So it's not the best for the comfort, but the best for the ground clearance. And then, as I said initially, we have this one here also pumped up more than four centimeters or like one and a half inches more ground clearance than, than the uh, normal E-Class with an air suspension. And so at this moment, it pushes it a little bit closer to an SUV, but does it have an SUV driving feeling with that? No, it doesn't. It's still closer just to a normal E-Class. So the driving differences here, all-terrain and normal E-Class, is not that large. It's just slightly that you feel this added height. Now going down here again, here you can see this augmented reality view with the camera image and also the arrows that are showing me the GPS direction. That is when you use the car internal GPS. Mm, I think it's a cool technology idea. But overall, after using it for a longer period of time, I usually feel I just want to see the map. And then, you know, most of the time I drive with Google Maps or Apple Maps anyway and have it then run via CarPlay or Android Auto. And to me, that's just the more reliable and more up-to-date solution always. Fun thing was, I just said when we're driving uphill and maybe also in the sport mode, the E-Class all-terrain basically felt the same. But when you're going straight or going downhill, then you feel a little bit more shaking, but actually in a good way, you know? So you feel more difference in here with the all-terrain version when you're going downhill for that. We are in the Tyrol region here, by the way. So it's, um, it's part of Tyrol is Italy, part of Tyrol is Austria. Um, there are like, apples, a lot of apples are coming here, you know? So very, very beautiful region, definitely. So back to the vehicle, you're now at about 70 kilometers an hour, like countryside road speed it's so silent and so planned and on the road so if you feel that an SUV is too high for you maybe too shaky then again you still want that hatch there in the back then the all-terrain is a very good compromise indeed if you can call it compromise but the same core base feeling you get in the E-Class sedan and the E-Class estate and the E-Class all-terrain Remember, this is basically the E-Class Estate, or T-Model, then just in this off-roadish version. And so you feel some little nuances back and there, but if you would go then blindfolded once here and then into another E-Class version, it is actually tricky to pick the difference. They all have in common that they bring, I always like to call it like soft, um, sovereignty on the road. So you feel super confident and you have this very special body roll feeling of the E-Class that it kind of like is above all things, rolling everything out. Not as heavy and large as an S-Class, but the sweet spot at Mercedes in the, in the model portfolio. And the really astonishing thing is then when you drive very, very early E-Class models and also the, the like the W123, that was not officially called E-Class yet, but even that one, this predecessor, you start driving it and you say, oh, that's an E-Class, you know? So the E-Class has a very distinct driving feeling. And that's also what I feel is very special about this model, that you can recognize this same core driving feeling throughout 
individual generations of that one. And now motorway and straight acceleration. Let's go to sport mode and we accelerate from 30 kilometers an hour. Let's go. Plop, 100, 120. There we go. This is the six cylinder power. Also just from this acoustic feedback, of course, nicer. Really beautiful, definitely the best engine you can go for with the E-Class here. And good that we still have a six cylinder in the E-Class. Not possible in C-Class, it will be possible again in the CLE also, that's more that sits in between. As for the fuel economy, you can, like straight, one kilometer an hour, 60 miles an hour, score some 7 to 8 liters on one kilometers, like 30 mbg US, 35 mbg UK. So good fuel economy, I feel actually usually better than with the four cylinder. Just when you have like a lot of topography changes, then it's a problem also here for this one. Then a hybrid, for example, plays a good or vital role, uh, but you can not get that for, you know, for the, the all-terrain version here, and also not in all markets the hybrids. But in general, when you go think about an E-Class hybrid, it pays off when you're in this mountain region, um, and you go a lot of up and down. Then you can use the recuperation effect a lot. Here, 110 kilometers an hour, like 65 miles an hour, super silent. The noise insulation is just awesome feels so well balanced on the motorway it's a great motorway vehicle sport mode still is fine but in a comfort mode even more comfortable and i feel with these upgrades for the new e-class here and even more so in the all-terrain which is then a little bit higher it moves closer than the s-class so i feel that e-class and s-class never have been that close as it is right here this is also a very interesting observation isn't it off-road mode here now, 110 kilometers now is exactly the limit of the off-road mode. And yet again, it doesn't make any sense. It just makes sense when you're driving a little bit slower and really need that little bit of extra ground clearance. So the E-Class in this generation drives really so extremely well. That is very well done. Cruise control set here on the steering wheel. And I can just stress again, controlling this base steering wheel, although it looks a little bit weird, is easier than the AMG line steering wheel. So all-terrain comes with this one anyway, but also if you think about other E-Class versions, I mean we have to say, forget about the visual part of the steering wheel, pick this steering wheel here because the buttons are so much easier to control actually. You also have elaborated assistance systems here of course in the E-Class. So when you have set the um, cruise control, then you also have Passive and active lane keeping assist. The passive lane, uh, lane keeping assist here is active when you're getting to the side of the road and then it rules back here. So, have you seen that? That was also like done in a very, very smooth way indeed. And then let's check out the active lane keeping assist. So, I tipped the turning indicator and see I did not steer that one now. And then it goes next to the other vehicle and we can accelerate out a little bit. So that also works maybe, yeah, just another comfort feature on the way to more autonomous driving. Of course, more and more is to come there and we'll keep you definitely updated with that. So, yeah, it drives agile. It's a little bit more floaty from that higher suspension, definitely. Not too big of a difference, still remains E-Class and a very good motorway vehicle indeed. So, we have more E-Class content for you. Check it out right now.